Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be configuring ICE and StealthWatch integration via PXRID. Um, I have an actual blog post on how to do that in earlier versions of StealthWatch, but this in 7.0, some of the process does change a little bit with the new added UI. So we're going to kind of walk through that. Um, the first thing you would want to do is uh, decide if you're going to be configuring this via the self-signed certificate with, with ICE or using a PKI infrastructure. Now in my lab, I'm using a uh, PKI infrastructure. So I already downloaded the root certificate and I'm going to upload that to, to StealthWatch, but I'll kind of show you um, where you would download that. So if you go to directory uh, certificate services under and uh, download the root certificate using base64 uh, base and just download the CA certificate, you'll be able to upload it to StealthWatch. Now, um, before you actually go adding any other certificates, you have to import that root certificate and have StealthWatch trust it, and it would be imported into the StealthWatch Management Center. So to do so, you would go to, first you would go to Centralized Management, then you want to want to edit that uh, appliance. So edit appliance configuration, go to the general tab and scroll all the way to the bottom. This is where you can add new, certi new certificates to the trust store. So I'm going to go CA root, I am root, and um, add that certificate there, add certificate. And you would want, I made the mistake of backing out of this without applying the, the settings before. Don't do that because you'll wonder where your root certificate is. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply changes and give it a few minutes to just kind of uh, apply that configuration. I don't think it's going to be rebooting, but it does take a couple seconds before we can go jump into it again. So I'll just kind of back away for a moment. And we're back. Um, that's applied at this point. So we would go back into the Edit Appliance Configuration menu and scroll down under the Appliance sub-tab. Um, so the SSL TSL, TLS Appliance Identity Certificate, this is for the communication between the different StealthWatch nodes. I wouldn't be changing that unless you're planning on changing the certificates for like your flow collector, your flow sensor, everything. So we're not touching that. So we're going to go to additional TL SSL TLS client identities because that's what's going to be used for communication between ICE and uh, if you're using like a Cisco security packet analyzer. But in this case, it's just going to be ICE. We're going to click Add New. I'm just going to go ahead and create this, generate the CSR. So this is going to be a security demo. Organizational unit IT. Irvine is where my lab is, California, US. We're going to generate that CSR. And we'll download the CSR now and open it with Notepad. Copy and paste this. So we're going to, in our uh, Active Directory Certificate Services, we'll request a certificate under Advanced Certificate Request. If you've watched my earlier videos, I kind of walked through the uh, certificate template creation when you're spinning up uh, server uh, server 2016 or whatever you're using. Um, if you need to refresh it, just go look at some of my uh, older videos. But we're going to use the template for PX Grid. Let's click Submit. I'm going to download the Base64 encoded and save that to file. Then I'll go back to Appliance Configuration and upload this. CA PX Grid. and choose that file I just downloaded. Oh, and if I wanted to choose the certificate file chain, I guess I can also add it, the root certificate here. So let's go ahead and add that cli client identity and click Apply Settings. And once again, it'll take a few minutes to complete, so I'm going to kind of back away from this and pause the video. All right, now we're back. So let's go ahead and go to uh, now that we've uploaded the certificate, we'll start our configuration for PX Grid in StealthWatch. So it, actually, let's go back to ICE really quickly. Just kind of walk through what needs already have been configured over in ICE. So in ICE, you would want to make sure that you have the uh, root CA trusted under trusted certificates. Uh, we did this in an earlier, earlier video years ago, but just kind of walking through this again. Um, you would have a certificate, if you're using a PKI infrastructure, you would have that uh, defined in here and that it's being used for PX Grid. 
And you want to make sure that under the um, deployment or your PSN or you have a PX grid uh, enabled ice node out there. So I only have one ice node and I've already clicked PX grid enable. And one last thing under PX grid services, I also made sure that under settings that automatically approve new certificate based accounts. So just level setting, everything's up, it's, it seems to be working. So let's go ahead and go for this configuration. So let's go to deploy Cisco ICE configuration, add new configuration. And this is going to be ICE. We're going to select the certificate of the one we just uploaded and the primary PX grid node, which I only have one node, so it's pretty easy. Um, if you have a secondary PX grid node, you can define it here as well. And under username, I, I know that seems weird, but this is actually what's going to show up in in inside of ICE under here. I made the mistake of putting admin once, and I'm like, ah, oh, god damn it, client name is admin. So don't do that. Uh, I'm just going to put SMC. And the integration options, you can choose adaptive network control, so that's where you can quarantine things. Uh, as you can see here, it'll just tell you that uh, it can assign or remove ANC policies. You can do uh, see static SGT mappings and things like that, learned via uh, security group exchange, and uh, see the user sessions for passive identity and other things. So we're gonna go ahead and click save. It's gonna take a second to, to connect, so just give it a moment. So you can see here, it's a uh, kind of, yay, that green dot is a good sign. So let's go over to ICE really quickly and just refresh this. Yay, it's showing up there. Hooray. Okay, so right out of the bat, uh, now it's connected. Let's go ahead and start to see if we see users now. now. I don't think I have anybody logged in yet, but we we will make this happen. So there's two types of things that uh, user sessions are going to come over. The first one is going to be, um, we're, you know, 802.1x sessions. So let's let's make one happen. So we've got this corporate machine over here, and this is just my um, my regular little guy here that uh, that does 802.1x sessions. Um, let me enable the proxy as well, because <laughs> I think I turned this off for testing purposes. I want to actually get some internet traffic going, so I'm gonna sign out and sign in just to make a login event happen. Log off. And let's refresh this guy. Might show the computer login, but it might not yet. Then I'm gonna go ahead and log in under my name. Let's generate some traffic so we can also do that. Some web traffic. Let's go go ahead and to go to hosts. Make sure that sees his host. I think with NetFlow it does take a few seconds to send over because our active and inactive timeout is something like uh, 15 seconds and 30. All right, so now we're starting to see my, my username logged in. If I want to click on that username, I can see some additional information. So I just get to see my us my u username, which is kmacnamara at security, uh, catmac at uh, securitydemo.net probably wondering what this is. I'll kind of walk through this in the in the Active Directory configuration. Now, if uh, I had multiple devices logged in, I would actually be able to see all of them logged in with my with my username here. And I could kind of dig into like all the alarms showing up with my username. So let's say somebody compromises cred credentials and they've logged into a bunch of different, uh, different servers and they're uploading a bunch from there. Instead of just looking at it from IP to IP, trying to figure out who's logged in, I can see that the majority of the alarms are coming from my username and the, that that device is, uh, or that username is uh, most likely compromised. And I can see all the devices and sessions are logged in. Now this is just 802, like straight 802.1x. Um, now with passive ID, um, we can see all AD logins, login events. So for an example, example of this, let me go ahead and RDP over to my, uh, my domain controller. Now my domain controller, 
it's a virtual machine. It's not actually um, authenticating via 802.1x. So I'm going to log in with uh, my administrator account. And in a couple seconds, I'll, I'll just generate a little bit of traffic going out to the internet. And then within a couple seconds, you should see that uh, that shows up, that should show up in, uh, in StealthWatch as another user. And that's the passive identity information carrying, carrying that over to uh, StealthWatch, even though there's not an active authentication because there was a Windows uh, WMI event that it sent that to, to ICE, and then ICE sent that over to StealthWatch. And it was able to do the uh, username to IP mapping. So went to Yahoo. There's a little bit of traffic now. Now I'm going to go ahead and w you know, kind of refresh this. We'll see if that username shows up yet. Aha, here we go. So we can see the log login of uh, from administrator and we can see exactly which IP address administrator is logged into. So even if the if you're not you do, implementing full 802.1x or network access control, you can still use passive ID to carry this information from ICE to StealthWatch and still track those user events.